Hi friends, well here I am back at Dance by the Light of the Moon to show you the after of the studio. I did put one more thing on the wall out here and so I wanted to show you this real quick because I like this. It's just cute. Um, 2007, Doug and I went to the Bahamas, uh, stayed at the Atlantis and this artist drew caricature of us. So that was fun. Anyway, okay, so here we are. Whoops. And just kick the door. Okay, so there's the shelf that was in the corner. It's still in the corner, but it's not full of stuff. This um, board, cork board, was hidden behind something. I found it. I put it up here. That's where the nail was already in the wall, so I just put it on there. But it's a little bit close over here, I think. So I'm going to move the nail down here. But uh, for now, okay, there's the hallway. There's the door. Wow, the door is closed. This car is full of painting supplies. And it's out here because this is the one that gets taken out to the family room most frequently. Um, if we're working on projects together or painting rocks or, you know, painting in, in books or whatever we're doing, there's everything from... Um, Mod Podge and um, paints are inside those green things and there's a big one on the bottom or underneath those two uh, full of paints and then there's um, Tattered Angels, Glimmer Mist and I mean all kinds of things so and some watercolors and, and everything so let's start with the call closet right here and show you that I do want to tell you though however um, we're doing the after, but it's not uh, it's not completely complete. Um, I like everything labeled. I've got a whole bunch of labels printed out, but I haven't had a chance to label everything yet. There are a few things that still need to be organized, but you know, for the most part, it's as good as it's going to get with uh, the shelving that, that's in there. All right, I can at least open the right side. It's hard to do with with one hand okay not everything could be put right into bins but at least that works in there so let's get this cart down the hall a little bit and get the door open and check out the after of the studio first thing we see as we walk in is one of those calyx um, shelves with the cubbies and if you remember the the black one and the white one were stacked on top of each other and I put it right here because I've made a new desktop and got some pretty um, boxes to put uh, in it and they hold things like fabric remnants and lace and buttons and fibers and doilies and quilling and all kinds of stuff like that so Let's start over here. So, let me back up this way here. If you remember, you just watched the before, so how could you forget? You've just seen it. This built-in desk here that the previous owner did, it's not um, conducive to art and crafting and the things that we do. And all of the shelves, they're not deep enough, they're not tall enough. So it does bug me a little bit that a lot of my containers hang over the edge, but I'm just going to have to live with that because they're built in and it's really not uh, worth it for us to rip them all out. So we still have the family printer, but we now have a printing station. We now have a shipping station. We now actually have an unpacked silhouette cameo and a laminator and a mini Zyron, and there's all the Spectrum Noirs and Copics. And look, we have a new sewing station. The whole corner, everything that we need. There's the thread. I like this, this is my favorite. Pin cushion in peacock colors. All the things there, there's just some things that I've been working on over here. Okay, moving around, we've got Cuddlebug, 
and the Evolution and the Cinch and the regular size Zyron. And what do they call this one? I forgot what they call this one. It's written right there. Um, Diamond Press. All that is is a miniature um, embossing machine. You can see that it's just like mm, two inches, two and a half inches. So strips and, and little tiny embossing folders go through there. So I keep it right there. It actually stays um, pretty, when I, when I start using it, that rubber creates suction and stays right on there. And so I can quickly run small things through there and use them. But um, I wanted all this set up with all of the machines out here so that this is just all workstation. I'm sewing, there's room to put things next to me. And when I'm not, well, and this is Tim Holtz. There's a few things that I haven't completed, as I said, and this is one of the projects that I'm gonna do, and I might do it as a, um, a YouTube video, so I didn't put anything in that, but I'm going to um, make a frame that goes in there. I wanted to be able to just pull out the machine I wanted to use, whether it's a cinch or you know, cuddle bug or whatever it is, pull it out, have room right here to use it to do embossing. Same thing with the silhouette. Just pull it out and have a whole countertop here uh, to be able to print out and, you know, not have to dig things out. If you're like me, you end up not using all the machines you have because there's no room to use them. So coming around to the end, um, some ephemera and then these, I didn't, haven't got labels. I haven't got labels on a lot of things yet, but I've got them all printed out, ready to go. Um, this is things like, there's a lot of Tim Holtz medals. One drawer I know is full of um, all different kinds of specialty uh, paper clips, like this butterflies, and it is so full because there's so many different kinds. And this has all kinds of medals and um, book corners and things like that. There's Tim Holtz medals and just all kinds of um, that type of thing, metal types of things. Okay, let's go down below. Um, drawers, we can now get to things to use the drawers. Okay, so I moved the little white shelf that was here and I brought in another one of the plastic shelves like the, the three drawer that was over here. And this one has things like fabric and large yarn and um, I think some uh, handkerchiefs, doilies, a few old things like that. And there's that thing with the two cubbies that you couldn't see before that is full of rolled um, wallpaper and uh, contact paper and uh, specialty paper. And then this one, I didn't get the labels on any of these drawers. I've got labels for all of these drawers here. The top one has twine and jute and all those kinds of things. I had a bunch of that. The second one, the middle one has book binding. Um, types of thread and embroidery floss and mini ribbon, mini rolls of ribbon. And then the bottom drawer is medium ribbon. So there's the, the mini, small, medium, and the large ribbon. Down here, I decided to leave the shelf. I just changed what was on it. So this is a shelf that really stands upright. That's the bottom, bottom over here. But I laid it on its side, remember, and got three cubbies and the shelf. And this one is full of, this bin here is full of words. So when I'm looking for words to put on when I'm making ephemera or journals or things like that, that's all together. There's some gesso, there's some backup glues back there. Um, an old, old Tupperware canister of ribbon scraps. Tools, um, tools that I don't use every day or on a regular basis, but they're still easy access here and a cake pan and a cookie sheet. And those would be for things that, um, like putting water to put, use stencils in it to, so they can soak and not get hard, um, or even marbling uh, book paper, bookends. Okay, so let's go up above. Up above the printing station is paper, and you can see everything is labeled on the shelves now. All the printer paper is right here, right where it should be by the printer. And there's photo paper and then some shimmer paper. And then this would be paper specialty that I 
um, would use to print maybe digis, um, lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight, things like that, some different ephemera. And then there's tissue paper. I use tissue paper to wrap uh, Etsy orders in. And there's the great big dictionaries that I'm they use to dry flowers and all kinds of stuff over here like laminating uh, stuff and um, <clears throat> there's some of that. Why is it as soon as you start making a video you forget what everything is called? You forget all your words. Uh, you know, the foam, cling foam that you put on the back of of your stamps, maybe when you unmount them from, from the wood or some that that you get that are never um, on wood. So some borders and trim. That box is full of bows and tassels. Um, on the bottom, and I've got the whole bottom here kind of divided. Uh, this is for mini things. These are really quite small little drawers that came out of something. Mini, uh, small, medium, and large. And <clears throat> excuse me basically I put in there according to size when I cut something down or I have some leftover like you know leftover paper and so you know it's this size that that's something I could use to make a large tag or um you know in, in a journal but it's you know a fairly large piece um like this this is music home sweet home but that's, you know, fairly large, the size of a large tag, so, and large tags themselves. So there's some uh, slides. Uh, so, so I, I told you before how I like these little boxes, and I've got a bunch of knobs, and I haven't put them on yet, because anything that is a box that doesn't have um, a knob yet, I one of the projects that I want to do, and I may do it as a video, uh, for YouTube is to cover it in paper like this one or to paint it and this one's just painted and distressed and and has this crystal knob on it and <laughs> this you can see that this is um, a box it's a really heavy-duty box that my uh, straightener came in and uh, the, the bottom and the top and they are actually just the perfect size for um, these cards and tags and things. So they're still too deep for the shelves, but so is everything else. But um, they're the perfect height and the perfect width. So I'm going to take those and cover them in paper. And then I'm going to put a knob on those two and they'll look just like the box. I do like these plastic ones and I have a variety of those, but... I don't have enough that I could get rid of the box. And honestly, I really like the the um, vintage look of these boxes anyway. So so across the bottom shelf, shelf, shelf there is the, the mini, the small, the medium, and the large. Ooh, I'll slow down. Try not to make you sick. Some vintage recipe cards. This is full of vintage recipe cards. I picked that up at a thrift shop. This one is index cards. And this one is all... Um, there's a really old book right there, but books that have um, great, well, look, there's a really old book. How's that? Super old. Great things in them, like with words or sayings or inspirational or motivational or things like that. This box is full of um, vintage, unused um, uh, retail clothing tags. And I mean, they're from like way back, but they never used. They came out of a store storeroom of a, I think of a JCPenney. So game pieces and game cards. This one's full of pockets and um, envelopes, mini envelopes. Some pockets that I've made, some pockets that, you know, that I've gotten. Um, some more office supplies. Going up to the next shelves here. Um, I put as many books really as I could get in here so that I have access to pull from a variety of everything when making junk journals or doing any kind of art. And so they're all labeled like Encyclopedia World, Foreign, um, over here, Cooking and Birds and Animals and Flowers, Gardening, Thomas Kincaid. I'm going to do some journals just on Thomas Kincaid uh, pictures, uh, kids books, things like that. Um, 
and then all the rest had to go downstairs into the bookshelf because there just wasn't any more room. This whole shelf and this whole shelf right here are full of uh, vintage book pages and music pages and um, there's some, you know, kids writing pages there. There's some patterns, just a few. I've got a whole bin of patterns downstairs, some ledger paper and graph paper and some different kinds of specialty paper. Here's some handmade paper and so different kinds of papers that I would draw on to put into a junk journal um, are in there. So just, I think we already started over here. So let me go slowly, not to make you sick. We'll get back around here to the end of the desk again. Okay, so at the end of the desk, there was still more shelves that are not tall enough nor deep enough, but we'll make them work. So let me see if I can back up a little bit and we'll just get both of those at the same time. All of these um, fabric bins have my stamps and dies and um, I spent quite a bit of time getting those all organized and into into envelopes, into pockets. Um, there's <clears throat> some bulb pins, you know, coilless pins. There's lots of charms down there, uh, down the bottom, some of the things that I make that I can use in in um, journaling, things like that. Some more, uh, some, some jewelry, jewelry that I might grab and use for journals frequently down here, but most jewelry making stuff is on the other side of the room. Uh, some envelopes, all kinds of things we do with envelopes, and some different kinds of ephemera in plastic envelopes, easy to grab. Um, this one is like specialty envelopes, so like this little airmail kind of thing, or um, a lot of them are, are like they already have, you know, the neat closures on them, or they go... Um, up and down, you know, height-wise, instead of like a standard envelope. Got some that are craft and some that are different colors. So a whole bunch of different kinds of, of things in there. So that container's lace. Um, Julie Nutting doll stamps in there. More Julie Nutting doll stamps in there. This container's full of washi. Um, ink refills and tea dyeing supplies in there, metal book corners, wooden embellishments in there. Okay, so let's move over to the left. Remember that awesome window that I said was west facing? It is the front of the house, that is true. But the front of the house is north facing, so I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to back up so I can get the whole thing in here. So not that it matters to you, but that is a north facing window because anybody who knows me will say, don't you know your directions? And I actually do know directions quite well. So that's north facing window, love it, because I've got two. Um, this cart here is um, full of, you can see all three levels have the plastic, little plastic, um, what do you call them? They're not bins really, they're not envelopes, they're whatever they are, like these, of plastic things right here this side over here is all flowers probably just you know little craft supply cases but this cart is full of those which is full of ephemera and um, things that I would grab to use you know at hand this is the same cart that was right here and had my sewing machine on it that I couldn't get to I took this cart out and um, gave it a a uh, couple of coats of kills and then some white paint and turned it into my right hand um, supply cart. So things that I want on my right hand that I use really frequently, like all the different adhesives that I would use are, are right here. And there's some tools that I use frequently um, and two containers of well, containers. This is, They were both standing up against the wall. This is an old um cassette player holder from probably from the 70s but you'd mount it on the wall and it held cassette tapes and now i use it and i hope there we go i use it for my inks 
it's perfect for holding the inks and that's right to my right hand side and then this one has all the um I haven't used these much. I really got them on a great deal from somebody who was no longer going to do Stampin' Up, but I just haven't used them much. I tend to use my Distress Inks and Distress Oxides, but I'm going to make a point to start using those. Down here, a couple project journals of projects I'm working on. Um, <clears throat> punches and templates. So in that binder, um, I take my punches and punch out one sample of every punch and I put it in there and then label which punch container it's in one through seven and let's go slowly back right behind me when we first came in the room down here you can see p123456 seven those are all the containers that hold the punches so if I'm looking for shapes that I know I have in punches I can look in that binder and see where it is and, and then just go straight to the little bin that has it in to get the punch that I want. And this fabric bin has <clears throat> tools that I use the most frequently. Corner rounder, <clears throat> excuse me, got a frog in my throat tonight. Crocodile, um, things like that. Hole punches, um, things that I use really frequently are right there. So everything I need right at my right hand is right there. Okay, so let's come around to the desk. I'm going to back up and show you the whole desk first. Okay, you saw the end with the nice boxes. So there's the desk. This desk is deep enough for our type of art and craft and whatever else we're doing, even sewing, although I've got that nice sewing station over here. So my Tim Holtz carousel is right here in the end. This is just a tile that I got for a project that I... I think I'm still going to do, but I thought I'd set this on it and I wouldn't scratch up the desk. So I just went to Ikea, and this is a desk top from Ikea. I think it cost me like $54. It wasn't expensive. And I set it on top of the two Calyx cubby systems. Remember the black and white one that were on top of each other? And I said I was going to paint them. I intended to, but in looking closer at them, they have laminate on them, and that just isn't, you know, a great situation to be painting on. So I decided not to put the black one over against the wall. And there's uh, stamps that I use really regularly. I want them right at my hand. Some other tools that I use right in here. Tools that I use very frequently, like my guillotine cutter, uh, my large scoreboard <clears throat> that holds 12 by 12, my misty, things like that. And on top of my desk, um, I do keep my Mac on, on this, but it's easy to move when I want to use it. This is um, the fuse tool, and it can just sit right in there. I plug it in right here and heat it up, and I can fuse on this silicone mat. And I've been fusing pockets for um, my dies and stamps and things. And I really like my glass mats. They're not great for video because the light reflects off the glass. Um, but I really love them. That's why I have two side by side because I just love them. And I even, even inking on them, um, the ink doesn't transfer to other things I'm working on. And I can take a baby wipe and just wipe it all up. Okay, so right here, this little pegboard came from Ikea. And it was under 20 bucks. Now, that was just the pegboard. So what I did, I had this little shelf that has been getting kicked around the room for a very long time. I am going to take it and paint it, but I decided to put it up just to see if I liked it first before, you know, getting to that point. And um, I had um, put in a couple of hooks uh, over the top of, of the pegboard and the little shelf hung on there perfectly. So I also liked from Ikea, one of the options they have was these like half rings that you can put in and they're intended to go this way. So they fit into these holes. They don't fit sideways. So if I put it on the end, it went into one. And when we get around the side, you'll see that it's on the side of the board. Let me just get over there. <clears throat> 
it hooked on the side of the board perfectly because I felt like it took up a lot less space to put it this way. But this is a splat mat that I'll put down silicone regularly if I'm painting or um, doing gesso or things like that. I just roll that out on my desk. And this is um, some paper, wood-like, wood grain type paper that I wanted to um, make a point of, of using for something. And here's some other paper back here that I wanted to make a point of using and I'm knocking things off. So these are punches that I use regularly. Mostly it's like circle punches of every size graduating. Um, that might be all there is there, except this one is a ticket. So super wide, uh, double stick adhesive, my heat gun, and the scissors that I use are very regularly. I tend to use that brush for uh, gesso or um, collaging. I use that a lot for collaging and love this desktop. Um, this I decided to keep here because I'm always having just a, a little tiny picture you know, left over from something and I'll turn it into a faux stamp. And so I thought I'm just going to keep this here because I'm always, you know, using something left over to make a faux stamp or, um, and I decided not to ink most of them to wait until I do the project. See, here's some that actual postage that I was able to cut out of something and turn into you know, stamps. And then here's some, you know, pictures and things that I have that I know will be perfect as I'm working and it's perfect for a faux stamp. I stick it right in there. So then we're sitting here. If I have a few minutes, I can just, you know, throw together a couple of those. Okay. So backing up again, and we're going to the left of the desk now. I haven't got anything on that cork board yet. Clock is the same, except I don't know if you can Remember, I put the blue behind it. It was clear, see-through, and it was really hard to see because of that busy wallpaper behind it. So that's a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. Um, just cut the corners to round it a little bit, cut a big hole in the middle to go over the, the center um, in the back that holds the motor, and bada boom, bada bing. There we have a little background. Okay, over here is, um, this is actually my photo station. This is where I take fo uh, photos for Etsy. Dropped right behind it, I have a um, backdrops that I can pick up and just set right behind those lamps. And to just get a white backdrop, um, some supplies down here, supplies down here, and that's a, a Cricut um, uh, Easy Press and some shipping supplies down there. Inside these boxes are, are some products that are just waiting to be uh, photographed for Etsy. So moving to the left, and this does have the two little wings that will uh, lift up if I, if I need them. Don't usually need them though. Oh, I'm gonna show you this. You need a place to take pictures, you want a, you know, a, a nice background. This is wallpaper. I took a piece of board, so if I can get underneath here. This is a piece of board that I had, and I just covered it. There it is. I just covered it with this wallpaper. And I didn't even roll the, the bottom under. I left it just go out around it, because then I have an extended surface. And I use that. You'll notice that I use that for a lot of my pictures in Etsy, because it's very neutral in color. The wood grain looks nice with pretty much everything. If it doesn't, I've got some lace and, and um, you know, a couple of big cloths and things that I'll pull out to use. But it's a good neutral background or uh, base to use for almost everything that I photograph. This um, pink thing came from Totally Tiffany. And it's a really cool, I don't even know what they call it. Underneath it is uh, one of those carts that folds up, folds down, it's plastic, it collapses. So when it's open, then you can fit this like apron around it and it goes all the way around all fours. And so you can store tools in there and, and there's a flat top as you can see. So then if you were to go to a crop, you could just pull your whole cart with you and everything that you need in it, whether it's inside or whether it's in some of the pockets and, and attachments around. So in there 
is um, art supplies. Like there's um, uh, sketching things. There's um, um, art, you know, pads, uh, paper pads. God, why can't I even think? Like, you know, watercolor paper pads and, and some different specific to painting and drawing type of things. A lot of the art things I have out because I use them a lot, but that's very specific to that. And all the boxes just have, you know, a variety of, of things stored in them, just like the ones down below. So this cart here is full of washi and, um, yeah, what are they called? <laughs> pearls, perfect pearls, or the, what's the, geez, I swear, you know, you use this stuff all day, every day, and then all of a sudden you get on camera and your mind just goes blank and you forget what, what stuff is called. These are all my mini Tim Holtz inks um, in these tins. The full-size ones are over by the desk. Okay, so that one's all full of that type of thing. Um, the drawers just have lots of different supplies. <clears throat> so the, here's this built-in shelf. And this is the only one where the shelves actually are deep enough and are tall enough, but it's kind of over here in the corner. So it's not really, you know, the best place for one that will actually hold our things. Up on top, both of those are full of napkins. Um, I love working with napkins, but I'm gonna get some of those up on Etsy because I just have tons. And um, some old books, some uh, specific types of books that I've been saving for specific projects there. And embellishments and things like that. And over at the top bin right here is shape and texture tools when working with uh, paint or gesso or, you know, stencils or things like that. There's all kinds of stuff in there that'll make different shapes or designs or... Um, you know, tools to to uh, help you you make cool things when you're using those type of mediums. So, and then my bins of feathers right there, um, and I have had several people ask about those in the past couple of weeks while I've been working on this. So I've decided for sure that I will get some of those up on Etsy, and yeah, have some ready to send to um, Lady Wolf. Shout out to Lady Wolf. Hi, Lady Wolf. How you doing? Thanks for pushing me to get this done um, right away. So this is a huge project. It takes a very long time to do when dragging everything out, when you have as much stuff as I did. And it is a huge project. And so I appreciate a couple people who have been keeping me on track and wanting, you know, asking for the video, wanting to see the, the after. And that helps to motivate me to get it done. Um, you'll notice I have a second little stool here on the other side of my desk, and that's because my little friend Evie, Evie is um, seven, almost eight, and Evie has been patiently waiting for me to get my studio organized so she could come over and we could have a color date. So, Evie, it's done and it's ready, and there's your seat at my desk all ready to go so we are now ready to have a color afternoon so you can have your mom call me and or text me and we'll set that up so back over here to this corner I'm gonna back up so I had one this uh, calyx system before was standing over on this wall remember it was standing up and down and then the white one and black one were on top of each other next to it well, I went to Ikea and got a second one and stood them on end um, side by side to get another four by four there. So if you have an Ikea near you and you go into Ikea down right by the registers just before you check out in most Ikeas off to the side, they have a big as is section and it is typically... I've never seen anything that was really broken. I've always had to hunt for if there was anything wrong with it. But typically it's the things that were the floor models. So if it's been on the floor for a while <clears throat> and they're not going to display that one anymore, maybe they're going to display a different color. Maybe there's a new version come out or whatever it is. They put them in as is. They don't sell them as brand new. So I picked up this Calyx uh, system at um, Ikea as is. 
and it was, hmm, can't remember now. I want to say it was 40 or $50 and they're usually 70 or $80. So that was um, a really good deal for me. And that was so, you know, 50 bucks for the desk and 50 bucks for that Calyx system. Um, I, you know, literally spent just barely over a hundred with less than 20 for the pegboard, um, to redo this whole room. So that was pretty awesome. It just worked out right that they put one out there the day that I need it. All of these containers up here, supply containers are project bins. Some are labeled, some are not. I have labels printed out for all of them, but I haven't gotten them all on. So, but those are all different projects that I'm working on. Let's move over here. <clears throat> um, another corner, the opposite corner um, of the one that has the nice big shelves. These are um, kind of good, but they're, they're deep enough, but they're not tall enough, I'll say that. They are at an angle in the corner because it goes over to a closet here. Uh, so they're kind of weird to store in because the left-hand side of the shelf is like eight inches deep and the right-hand side of the shelf is like 18 or 20 inches deep. They're just kind of weird to store things in. So anyway, there's some pull-out drawers down there with just, uh, you know, supplies for um, art and uh, junk journals. And there's all the, the bulk of the jewelry supplies are right here on this shelf and they're all labeled nicely. And this shelf as well. And this shelf as well, although this is one is used a lot for junk journals too, because this one has leather and chain and wire and things like that that I would use in junk journals and a lot of steampunk stuff. And this is my cup that I use when I'm painting. I put water in the rooster cup and then I put water inside the little shot glass inside. And then one stays as clean water and one is dirty water. So if I need to get a little clean water to add to my project, to the paint, I can dip in the one, but then when I wanna clean my brush to move on to the next color, I put it in the other. And so I keep one clean and one dirty, and it makes it really easy to have them both right there on hand. Um, up there is uh, shipping supplies. Those are envelopes of different sizes, obviously. Okay, so another thing that I did, oh, I didn't tell you at the beginning, you'll, you probably, I'll, we'll go back there in a second. I had um, hubby take the door of this closet off because it was an accordion door and it was just really in the way. It just stuck out right here and just was in the way. So this is my roll of burlap that I got a really great price on a long time ago. And so then all these can be uh, stacked up and labeled and just filled up with embellishments and ephemera and things like that. And there's some art supplies up there, some things that aren't needed very often, some seasonal things. Yeah, and then that big box has um, has great big pads of uh, paper like that you would put on a great big easel and then flip over the top. So those are really great for putting down um, on the desk or on the table if we're doing some messy art. And then I'm going to back up from there so you can see that this 4x4 Calyx system, see if I can get back far enough, is still here. This is the one that was here before. It is still here, but everything has been gone through. A lot of paper has been um, sold or given away to friends that could use it. And so everything then is organized and everything is labeled. Most of this is um, solid or close to solid colors. And so they're labeled by color. And then some specialty papers, everything from denim paper to um, burlap paper, canvas paper, cork paper, you know, all kinds of different specialty ones in those too. Some Christmas paper there. Um, cardstock that I use a lot of, like vintage types of things right there. Now there's some more specialty down there. Found a whole nother bin of it, you know, after I got those two in. These two down here are all graphic 45. And these are uh, like vintage cardstock like these two, except these are still in their paper stacks, not um, separated. Up above, 
um, mounted the TV finally. Yay. This is where I watch while I'm sitting at my desk working. This is where I watch your videos on YouTube while I'm uh, creating myself. And there's some fabric scraps in there. And then if you remember at the beginning, this whole thing was covered with these kind of um, storage containers and they were all full of wood mounted stamps. I cut my wood mounted stamps in half. I went through them and sorted. There's actually half the number of containers up here now and all the rest are to be sold. Um, most of them, 98% of them, have never been used, so they will probably be listed on Etsy. Um, I've got a lot of things for quick sale, so prices are going to be great. So check my Etsy, but keep checking back because I have so much. Do you remember the black bins with the yellow lids that were stacked right in the middle of this room? Right here, on top of the pink rug, which is gone, by the way. Those bins were full of um, embossing folders and dies and stamps as well. All brand new. And I only kept what you saw in those uh, fabric containers over here. That's all I kept of, of those. It's uh, actually this, this, and this, and then uh, the first two here on the bottom. That's all I kept. So all the rest are to be sold on Etsy. And those will be definitely be priced to sell because I need to move them out. They're not in here because they're in a bin in another room um, ready for me to sit down and, and get them all listed. So, so here's where I would sit at my desk on my side. And then there's the TV right there. There's my shredder plugged in and ready to go. And silhouette mats hanging up there, um, ready to go. And we're back to the door with the vinyl right there. So I think I showed you everything that I had people ask me about or that I was thinking that I wanted to show you. I'll probably think of something after. Oh, what I was going to mention over there. If you remember the beginning of the video, there was um, cupboard doors, cabinet doors on a couple of these over here. And then there used to be one on this one here. But before I shot the before, before I shot the before video, I actually had already taken these off. But you see now that I took those doors off as well, which actually gave me better use of these shelves because you can see they're not very deep and so my containers overhang a little bit, but they couldn't do that with the doors on. So it's just much more open. So now nothing in the room has closed doors at all. One more pan around. Hope that's not too fast making anybody sick. There's drawers, of course, but there's no doors on anything, including the closet over there in the corner. And back to the door. So there we are. So if you have um, comments or questions, I would love to hear them. If you see something and you have a suggestion, I would love to hear it. I'm always open for new organizing suggestions. And remember that funky wooden thing that I think held uh, slides and I kept saying um, I think uh, in ancient times really not ancient times probably like the 40s 50s 60s 70s even I remember my parents putting slides in you know and showing them at, at events so um, but I think that little wooden thing held slides so if you have a great idea for that please leave it in the comments because I have a lot of stuff to de-stash and I I'm going to send a nice prize to someone or maybe some ones who come up with ideas that I can use it for. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for stopping by and um, taking a look at my before and after. Um, please don't leave me horrible comments about my before because it is embarrassing. And, you know, I just need to do what I needed to do. And so here we are with the after and, and it's workable. So, um, but thanks for stopping by. And I do have uh, lots of videos that are going to be coming out now, now that I'm back. Uh, I've been away for probably a month, um, working on a couple of other projects and getting this before and after uh, done uh, of my studio. So now I'll be back uh, filming videos and getting them up. Lots of tutorials coming uh, quickly. So if you'd like to check in on some of those and see 
what type of um, projects I'm working on, what kinds of things I'm making. Check back, watch some of those tutorials, and if you like what you see, then hit subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and then please share it with with uh, you know anybody that that you have you know in your social media. Um, here's the thing, not just my videos, but anybody's videos that you watch, that you like. There's lots of artists out there. I watch lots of yours. Um, anybody that you like, if you share their videos, then it helps YouTube see that and when they're subscribed to, notifications and, and shared, YouTube sees that this is a video that people might like and it helps them to make that video more visible to other people who might be interested in those types of craft or art um, videos. So if you have favorite artists that you watch, I know a lot of you watch uh, Gail Agostinelli and or Linda Israel and um, uh, Roxy Creations, Foxy Roxy and Oh, there's just a ton of them. I can't even name them all right now, but share those videos and make sure you hit subscribe and, and help those artists out because we all need help and this is the best community for doing that. So thanks again. Have a great day and I will see you soon with some new procedure videos. Bye-bye.